Hi there. Okay, so my daughter passed her driving test today. So Amelia's our second driver, actually our fourth driver in the house, if you include my husband and I. Um, and so I want to celebrate, but I, you know, it's one of those things where you realize, oh, we need a celebration and I need one now. So I'm going to make a chocolate souffle, as you do. And I know, and I would have made chocolate pudding, but I didn't have enough cream to make it really good. So I went with a souffle, and I know you're like a souffle for like a last minute thing. Yeah. And I don't even make these very often. I have not made a souffle in years. But I used to make them a lot. And the reason I like a chocolate souffle is it's easy and it's tasty. Um, and two other reasons. It looks really impressive. Like it looks way fancier than it really is. You can also, it's always dairy free. It's so easy to make it gluten free. Oh, I gotta get flour out. That's what I said that. And um, it's really high in protein. This thing takes five eggs. Five eggs. Let me tell you the ingredients seven and a quarter ounces of 70% dark chocolate. Check. You can put a little coffee in it if you want. I don't because I have non I have coffee haters in my family. I know, like hex. Um, five eggs, half a cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, and a tablespoon of flour. That's it. That's it. So easy. I had all those things. So um, what I'm waiting for now is I'm waiting for my chocolate to cool, and I think I've done it. I melt it. You can melt the chocolate over a double boiler, or you can nuke it in a microwave. I was just cooling it down while spilling water everywhere. So what I did first was, first I melted the chocolate so it had time to cool, popped it in the microwave. And then I separated five eggs, and I beat five of the egg white, the egg whites, into egg whites. Set it aside. In the other bowl, I put all the egg yolks, five egg yolks, whisked in half a, half a cup of sugar, you know, just stirred it until it was nice and smooth and bright yellow. I know my egg yolks are insanely bright. And then I added a few pinches of salt. I actually threw in some vanilla because it's not in my recipe, but I didn't know why. So I'm experimenting with a little vanilla in there. Um, and now I'm going to add my chocolate and a little flour. And let's see if that's going to be too much. No, it's fine. So the tricky, the, so here's, there's a couple things I want to show you because I think they're really helpful. <gasps> I don't have an apron on and I'm going to get chocolate all over myself. Uh, hang on, hang on. So there's a couple of tricks here that'll make your life easier. Let me get an apron. Real food matters. Okay. Up sleeves. All right. So get my chocolate nice and smooth in there. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of flour in there. I'm not going to measure it. Oh, that is whole wheat pastry flour. That's not what I want. No, I'm just going to use plain old white flour. You could use a gluten free flour. You can make these into individual little um, individual little ramekins rather than the big souffle dish. And if you do that, you don't need flour at all. The, fla the flour really stabilizes it. Um, that's what I'm pretty sure. If you want to stabilize one of these, you could probably use cornstarch or arrowroot powder too. Um, there we go. I'm just going to stir that in. Oh, there. Now, here's the tricks. I buttered my souffle dish, and here's something cool. When you butter it, I just get a piece of wax paper and I rub the butter everywhere. You know how to do that. And then on the edges, I wipe up all along the edge so there's like little highways for the for the souffle to rise on. I think it really helps. So you, you'll, if you look closely, which you can't, you can see like little vertical lines going up the side, just like on the outside. And then I personally pop a little sugar in there and like pat it around so it's like it's you know when you butter and flour pan I butter and sugar this pan. Set that aside. Now what I'm gonna do is I hate this because I'm not I'm not a big baker, right? I just make food to eat for nourishment. So let's get a spatula. So folding in egg whites, not something I do very often at all. 
but there's a trick to this. And I should say that even though I'm not good at folding in egg whites, I probably fold egg whites in once a year, max, because I just don't do this kind of baking. Someone's going to lick that later. I've never ruined this to the point you couldn't eat it. You can eat it. So the trick is to take a third of the egg whites and mix them into this egg, egg yolk chocolate mixture. And once that, that kind of loosens it up, and then take that and put it all into the egg whites. So this is just gonna be a little, so I'm gonna, see, I think that's about a third. And then I'm gonna mix this in, which means I'm gonna kinda of deflate these egg whites a little bit more, maybe. I mean, I shouldn't even be showing you this because I'm just not, I'm not the egg white folder. I'm not good at this, but you know what folding is? You just like fold it over and fold it over and fold it over. Someone wants to jump into the thread and like school me on this, drop some knowledge about folding egg whites. I would be very welcome. I would not be offended. You can't be good at everything. All right, so that is indeed much lighter get some more of that chocolate. It's really bothering me, all this excess chocolate sitting around here. Okay, and now I'm going to put all this into my egg whites and fold the lot. So even when, my blood sugar isn't as sensitive it used to be. When I used to be under a lot of stress and I was not a healthy person, I had really sensitive blood sugar. I could not eat sweets. I couldn't have any caffeine. I could eat this because there was enough protein in here to, why is there so much liquid in those egg whites? That's just annoying. This is just a gloopy, soupy mess. It and I know this. I know every time I've made this, I felt like this is gonna suck. But I just kept sort of folding. Like, I feel like there's a lot of liquid in my egg whites, and I'm not sure what I did wrong. But it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. All right, can you see where I'm at now? It's a mess. Keep folding. And, of course, you're not going to see the finished product either, so I can tell you anything. But I've never made this and not had it turn out. All right, it's coming together. Look, getting more homogeneous. Okay. That's looking better. I'm, af I'm always afraid of, of really just destroying the, the lift of the egg whites. So I think I'm gonna give the bottom a really good scrape make sure at least I got that chocolate in. And I'm just gonna pour it into the pan as it is. Even though it's not completely homogeneous. I think it's good enough. And once you make one, like once you make a chocolate souffle, and you realize how easy souffles are, I think you should try your hand at like a cheese souffle, a cheese and onion souffle or something, because they're so good, they're so fancy, and it's a great way to use eggs to make something really neat. Of course, you don't see me making souffles very often. I'm like, totally gonna make scrambled eggs. All right, that's it. It will rise up the sides when I bake it. And it's at 350, I think, for like 20 minutes. You don't have to put it in a weird water bath or anything. Is that right? Yep, like 20 minutes. One, two, three, start. Boom. That's a souffle. That is a chocolate souffle. Dessert in the red tent. I love this recipe. I think you should make it. It's better than a birthday cake. If you can't tolerate all that food, all that gluten and stuff, this is way better on your blood sugar, and I think you're really going to like it. I'll try to post a picture when it comes out if it looks really beautiful. But 
I did put a link earlier and I'll put a link again with a recipe. I've got it on my blog. That's a very good recipe and has a very nice picture on it. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.